All right, so this is a video um, about how to contact people via email when we have shared their recipes on our um, on one of our blog posts. Now, what we're doing now now is we're starting to do what we call roundups or recipe roundups, where we are sticking to a theme and we are selecting the best healthy recipes from around the internet. This week we have 30 healthy pumpkin recipes. So I'm going to click on it and just go through it a little bit. So we've got a bunch of pumpkin recipes here. So the recipes start down here. So we scroll down here and as you can see we've got um, different images and different links to the websites of these people to the recipes and I'm gonna click on them and actually if you're clicking on them they should open in another tab automatically alright there was an error for some reason why is that happening hold on alright so this one worked so I'm gonna have to go in and fix that other one um, so this is what so this is how we're gonna do this the Email address that I want you to use is this lifestyle dynamics assistance at gmail.com. And you'll notice when you click and you open it up, it has a lifestyle dynamics.com and it has um, the signature line already filled in. So this is how you're going to do it. So this is Sally's baking addiction.com and we shared one of her recipes. And over here, this is the document you're going to use. This is the subject of your emails and this is what you're actually going to send them you don't need to include your name because it's already included and every week this link is going to change based on which post we're actually going to be um, referencing so this one is 30 healthy pumpkin recipes and you're going to fill in the name of the person as you go along so the easiest way that I've found to do this is to open up a bunch of new message windows so there are 30 recipes we'll just start with five and we'll copy the re your recipe onto each of these your recipe and you'll see that it then fills in your recipe so we see that these two have been done but these two have not and we fill it in and so we'll just start with five otherwise it's going to get a little bit crazy and then we go through and copy this so you just paste it in somehow I missed the hello alright so I'm just gonna copy it again make sure that I get everything alright you're gonna copy that in there so these two already have it. All right. We might not have gotten all of them. We have at least four of them. Uh, we might be missing one, but we'll figure it out. All right. So the first thing you want to do, okay, this is Sally's baking addiction. So I think it's safe to assume, yes, meet Sally, that her name is Sally. So we open up our first one and we change this section. We delete it fully so there's no more yellow showing. And we reference, hello, Sally. Now we're going to see if we can find her contact information. Um, and I think the best way to do that is probably to go to the About page. So we go to the About page, see if the information is readily there. I usually just scroll down until I see keeping in touch alright so she says you can subscribe via email um, let's see you can email me so if we click on this we should get an email address okay so what it looks like is mail to and it's opening up in our browser but it says mail uh, to Sally's baking addiction and right now it's opening up my Outlook Mac, which I don't want to have it do because I don't use this, so I'm just going to quit. But it's right there, Sally's Baking Addiction at gmail.com. So I'm going to copy that. 
and I'm going to paste it in here. And then I would just send this, I would just email this out. So this is going straight to Sally. I make sure that everything is as it should be. And then I send it out. I'm just going to close this and hold it as a draft right now. But you would just send it off. And then you go to the next one. Okay, that one's done. That was pretty easy. So you close that. You go to the next one. We got Sally. Now we've got this pumpkin spice smoothie. Skinny Miss. All right, so um, I'm just going to bring up a couple of points. Sometimes you'll find that people's email address is written out. We'll just copy the one that we had. Sometimes you'll find that people's email addresses will be written out, and instead of having the at symbol, they will have like a symbol like this, spelling out the word at or something like that. The reason that people do this is because there are robots out there, there are, there are software programs that find email addresses and just send spam emails out. And so the way that some people keep this from happening is that they don't include an actual email address. They do almost every point of the email address, but they uh, turn the at into something like this. Sometimes you'll see them do dot com like this and so all you have to do is when you put it in your e in your email to send them an email you change it to the proper symbols and that way they know that you're not a robot and that you're actually someone who is of value and wants to t uh, to co uh, contact them all right so now we are at skinny miss and we see if it is very easy to find her information. Now this looks like this might be a site that is run um, not by an individual but by a company. So those sites are sometimes harder to contact. Uh, I like to scroll to the bottom of those sites and see if there's a contact page here. Now here's fitness, meal plans, recipes, weight loss and I look and I skim through and I can tell already that this is not going to be helpful to us. Shop might be the best option, but it doesn't look promising either. And then stay connected. The only things that are here are social media accounts. So sometimes that's, get, sometimes that's going to happen where you're going to find that they don't have any way of contacting them. There's no email address. There's no contact page, but they have social media. So what you can do is I like to um, click to open this in a different um, in a different tab and the way that I do that is I press my command button I have a Mac so I press my command button and then I click on it alright and it there it is it's opening in a new browser it's actually doing it a couple of times because I was impatient alright so we unfortunately is slow so what you want to do is in your own um, you can use you can use our the Facebook that um, I'm actually not sure which Facebook I'll have you use I will um, I will let you know probably probably maybe your personal one but I'm not sure so what this is what we want to do we want to contact them through their social media Facebook is good because you know Facebook has um, a way of contacting people. So let's see. Is there a way of... Here, message. So you would go to their, the message and you would write a message to them. And it's the same exact message that you were going to write before. Not that one. So we go back to our Word document. We copy this. And in this case, you need to put your name. And you need to put whatever name you're writing from because Whatever Facebook account you're using, that's the name that you want to put. All right, so you copy that. You don't need the subject at that point. You copy that and you paste it into here. I'm not going to really send this, but look, and it even includes the 30 healthy pumpkin recipes. It's very, very convenient. So um, we don't know their name, and that's another thing. If you don't know their name, just say hello. 
Make sure there's no line there because if there's a line there, people are going to be able to tell that you're sending them a form letter. You don't want them to think that you're sending them a form letter. It's very impersonal. So just make sure that you have everything there. Um, oops, and I already sent it. Wow. Okay, well, so I accidentally sent that one, but that's fine. And um, so that's what you would do for social media when you don't have an email address. All right, let me see what else we want to cover. Um, if they don't have, sometimes you'll find websites, and I don't know if there's anyone, any on this case. Um, this one might be, the, this WordPress one. We're going to open up this WordPress one, and um, we're just going to see if this is an instance. Sometimes, shoot, this is not the right one. Let's, okay. Hold on a second. This, this one right here. So see it says eatthecookie.wordpress.com. All right, so the itch, the issue with this one is that it's a wordpress.com site. So this sometimes people have websites that aren't fully flushed out and there's no way to contact them and they don't have any links to social media or anything. It's just a blog. They throw stuff up there. Um not, you know, we don't know exactly what their purpose is. Sometimes they just like to share things. Sometimes they just like it to use it for their own purposes to uh, keep their own recipes and it's just a fun hobby and they're not really trying to promote themselves as a business. Uh, so what we do in the case where we can't find any social media and we can't find any email address. Okay, so here's this girl. See, her name is Liz, so at least we know her name. But there's there's no um, no contact info, anything. One thing we might do is we might make a comment. So we could go to the About section, or even the section of the website that actually had... Let's see pumpkin bread. Okay, so I would go to the bottom of the pumpkin bread and that's where I would put and that's where I would put this. So let's find a comment section right here. This is the comment section. You can scroll down and it says leave a reply. And that's where you would say hello Liz and you would leave your reply at the bottom there. All right now, this time I'm really not going to do it, but that's an, another idea, is if you can't find any information about how to contact them otherwise, just go to the bottom of that recipe that you used, this pumpkin bread here, and leave the reply there. So at least you have some way of, of getting in touch with them. Um, if you're just not finding any way, there's no way to comment, there's no way to find them on social media, no email, don't waste too much time. That's a big thing. Don't waste too much time on trying to find this stuff. You'll get the hang of it. Um, so the first you know, couple of times, it'll be a while. Oh, and look down here. The, this is the uh, one that we shared on social media, but I just scrolled down even a little bit further, and there's the contact. So you can try to contact them through there as well. Um, so they do have a contact page. And when they only have a contact page, when they only have a contact page, you just want to fill in the information and send them an email via the contact page. That's okay too. So yeah, so there are basically, sounds like there are four ways to contact people. Either you find their email and you email them or you find a contact page, contact them through their contact page. Uh, the third way would be to contact them through their social media. And I, I, prefer, I prefer Facebook, um, but some of, the other, some of the other social media accounts have uh, messaging, direct messaging as well, so you can use that. And the last way, the last resort, would be to go to the bottom of their recipe that you shared and comment on the recipe at the bottom in the comments section. Just share that same thing. 
Um, I would say, let's see, I want to see if there's anything else. I think that's all. I think we've basically covered it all. But yeah, the, the best tactic is just to open up a bunch of these and to copy uh, the content into there. And just as you go along, just go down the list and do one by one. Now, I know that we didn't do one by one and we didn't go down the list, but the best way to do it is just to go down the list so you don't get confused um, and mess yourself up and send. You don't want to send people more than one email because that you know, looks a little bit sloppy. Um, the first thing to do, because sometimes we share multiple recipes from the same person, what you don't want to do is you don't want to send them multiple emails just because we have two recipes in one of the articles. So detox Cena. Uh, so what we do is we can scroll down and look and say, see, are there any duplicates? Do I recognize any of these? And at a certain point, I got down to um, to one of these, and I wasn't sure. You know, I was like, okay, I haven't seen that one, haven't seen that one, and then I got down to uh, let's see which one is it. Got down to. This one, pop sugar, and I, I couldn't remember if we had done a, another pop sugar one. Well, if we have done another pop sugar one, that means that um, it'll be duplicate. So what I do is I press Command F, and look, it's already up. And this is the Find button, and you can type in, you can type in, um, look, bad. you can type in the, the word and it'll come up, look, one of one. So there's only one place where we have written pop sugar. So there's only one recipe. So that's a really quick way of figuring out if you've already, if you've already seen that person and how many times you should contact them. So that's just something to pay attention to. And I think that is all. If you have any questions, do let me know. Um, and you'll get really quick, really fast at this. And it's not something to spend a lot of time on because it's not going to be... Um, a huge money-making venture, but it is something that we want to want to do, and it will help slowly but surely to build up the re the um, relationships and the networking between uh, ourselves and these people, and as well as just to possibly have them share us on their social media, which would mean more people who are seeing the art the article, which means more people on our website, more people possibly following us in social media, and and more. Um, more inflow for the business means possibly more sales and it all it all works together so this is definitely a very important thing to do but uh, you should become really fast at this and it shouldn't take a lot of time alright I think that's it and 